I think uh, everyone was uh, appreciating the fact that it's Canadian Thanksgiving and uh, and decided to stay home for us, I guess. Uh, so so thanks, everyone. Uh, but we do have a few people that forgot that it was Canadian Thanksgiving, so uh, I'll introduce them here. So we got Corey Schmidt. Hey, Corey. Hey. Yeah, we can see you. We can see you, and we got David Dickinson. Hey, hey David. Columbus, Columbus Day weekend down here. So. It is Columbus Day weekend, <laughs> and uh, and Gary Ganella. Hey, Gary. Hello. All. I should pause that. All right. Uh, cool. So uh, now. We've got uh, our our good friend and enemy, the stupid moon, is back. So uh, tonight is completely washing out uh, everything that we're going to be showing. So don't be surprised if things aren't as high quality as uh, as we usually do, just because of the uh, yeah, the stupid moon, um, which most astronomers would just not even bother going out on a night like tonight unless they were going to observe the moon. So, but we just we sold we soldier on. So uh, I love the moon. You love the moon. Well, for sure, we love the moon. But uh, if you're going to try and see anything else, it's going to get pretty washed out. So, um, all right. Oh, Scott wants to join us. Let me see if I can bring him hither. Two words: if we had no moon, no eclipses, <laughs> and some other problems. Yeah, I'm going to just switch to David's view of the moon here. His shaky view of the moon. Now, is yeah. it your telescope that's shaking, or is the moon actually it's, shaking around? It's like me. That? It's me. It's me moving the controls and declination, looking for some cool. What four percent? So, yeah. yeah. I am aimed right at Eratosthenes. Is that crater that's half illuminated? The floor of it's half illuminated, right there. That's uh, yeah. Where's Eratosthenes? It's right in the center of the disk. Let me pull my phases of moon up. At, is it um, near Copernicus or? Uh, yeah, it is pretty close to it. Yeah, okay. All I don't right. know if it's labeled on this one. I don't think we labeled it, no, but uh, that's great. And you can see that central peak there, which is great. Yes. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's Scott. It's me. Sneaking in like a ninja. Nicely done. Five minutes uh, later. Hi, Scott. You made a lie out of me. They, everyone was, The astronomers were like, Scott, where's Scott? Is he coming tonight? And I'm like, well, he said maybe, and then he was busy, and so that means no, at least in my world. Here I no. am. No. Apparently, maybe, Boom. maybe... It's a new yes. Means yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's Scott. People didn't even see him there. But uh, um, okay, uh, I'm gonna go over to Corey's view, which is another view of the moon. I stand corrected. That is Copernicus. Eratosthenes is right next to it. Last night and try shooting the moon. So let me hook up my camera and see if I can show you an almost live moon. Oh, cool. There you go. Oh, neat. So, um, Oh, that's look great. So just to let people know, um, this is an interactive experience, and so you can talk to us, and we will talk back. Uh, and also, you can make requests. So if there's anything that you would like to see, we'd be glad to pull it out for you. Now, you have to ask, though, you have to preface, which is, uh, I would like to see a completely washed out, moon-obscured view <laughs> of, and then X, right? So if you want to see the Ring Nebula, you say, I would like to see a washed out view of the Ring Nebula, or I would like to see a completely blown out... Uh, Andromeda, and then we'll do that. So, um, uh, oh, so <laughs> X Men 049 says that was a crazy Breaking Bad episode tonight. Uh, <laughs> but you know we're done with Breaking Bad. But then <laughs> Jim Meeker says, and now it's The Walking Dead. So now we have to battle with The Walking Dead. Uh, I, yeah. this is like a conspiracy theory, I think. So, uh, I'm gonna go back to David's view. Actually, I'm gonna go to Gary's view. Uh, this is the Swan. Nice. M17, and let me... Uh, M yeah, and you can really see the like the, the noise in the background. I mean, it's a it's a great picture, but you can also see how the, the stupid moon is, is yeah, having a bit of an impact. the moon is washing things out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's an in big end of it. Oh, it looks great, though. And just like it, the, that central core with where those, those really bright, hot stars are is just completely over... Um, Overexposed, overexposed, just because there's so much energy coming out of us. Yeah, that's a um, a one minute with no binning. And as Dr. Thad Zabo uh, let us know last week, that you have to have a Type O star to get enough radiation pouring out of these stars to be able to create that really, really bright uh, core of the of the nebula. So those are going to be the kinds of stars that are going to detonate a supernova within the next the next few million years. Frazier, the reason my moon is drifting right now is my drive motor battery just died. 
Oh, did it? I'm, I'm, pro- I'm going to have to do a quick battery swap, so I'll be offline for about... Okay, minutes. sure. Yeah, or just right keep back. hand guiding. Corey can tell you how to do that. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, all right. I'm going to move to Corey's view. Hey, it's a moon-washed-out Andromeda galaxy. Yes, it is. That's a one-minute exposure, or two-minute exposure, I believe, of Andromeda um, through my 80-millimeter refractor. So... You can see M110 and M32 there. And actually, if you look down in the lower right, you can actually see some of the clusters inside uh, Andromeda through the moon, even. Oh, just like down at the very bottom right-hand side of the the galaxy? Yeah. Yeah. Just barely. Yeah, and so, I mean, these are areas of, of, like, like, are they globular clusters, or are they just... I don't know what they are. I can't tell you. David might know, but he's uh, yeah. swapping batteries right now. Scott might know as well. What are we looking at? Andromeda, just these, the detail. Yeah. Andromeda. yeah, down at the very bottom right of Corey's view, you can see there's like just some 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 star clusters going on down there. Uh-huh. And just the question being, are they like globulars or are they actual like star forming like other kinds of star clusters, star forming regions? But that's a great point. I'm not really sure which part of the bottom right you're looking at. Oh, just in Andromeda, you can see, like, clusters and, you know, dust and... I don't, or not dust, but I guess, but... Well, uh, there's dust there, too. Well, nebulosity and stuff in the right. in the disk itself, so... Uh, Russell Bateman has, was streaming some moon earlier, and he said the scene was pretty good, but the moon is too low for him to share right now, so... Moon. Uh, moon. Moon! So that's... But then it'll, the skies will darken, and you'll be able to view some other stuff. So, yeah, check out Russell Bateman's uh, channel if you haven't already. He's got some yeah, great, this is awesome. yeah, some just amazing pictures of the night sky. So, and we haven't had him in the star party, have we? Yeah, we have. Did we? Maybe I was. Maybe, uh, maybe I have. Yeah, maybe I have. think so. Yeah, maybe we haven't been at the same time. But yeah, no, great astronomer. So. Yeah, really good guy. Yeah. Here's my moon. Let me screen show this real quick. This is from yesterday, last night. Oh, that's adorable. Isn't it? It's cute. Yeah, it's really cute. Which so, is, how did you uh, how did you take this? With a camera? Um, no, I've got a Fuji. It's a bridge camera, so it's not a DSLR. It's between a point and shoot and a DSLR, so everything's manual. And I had it. Um, my lens goes up to 30x optical, and I put it out there. Um, I think it was a. Well, I could look up the, at the exit data. That might help. But I want to say it was like a, an eight second because I have everything turned down, like everything turned down as far as my ISO settings and everything like that. But I'm happy with it since I don't have a hook to a telescope. That is just my camera, and I can zoom in pretty good, so I'm happy with that. Uh, are you able to hear us yet, David? You still? Yeah, I'm back online. I just got to okay. get line back up now. Battery. Okay, great. Well, I won't make you think about a bunch of things all at the same time until until you're done, because um, I was going to ask, ask <laughs> okay. you some questions. Uh, well, let's go to Gary's next picture here. This is uh, the Eagle, our famous Eagle yeah. M16. I really uh, see the Eagle on this now. Yeah. Like, it looks like it's sort of swooping down, and well, then that's its, that's, those are, that's its wing in the upper there, and then, yeah. The wing here and maybe the head here. Oh, yeah, right, back, yeah. Well, down. no, like, no. It's like its its tail is is the bottom right there, and then its wing mm-hmm. is up above, okay. and then maybe maybe another wing to the bottom there, and it's just kind of, and then its head is like where the pillars of creation are, a little to the front of that. It's almost like it's a mm-hmm. beak there, right here. Well, no, more to the left. Over here. Yeah, that's yeah. where the beak is, right? And then that's the tail on the other. Sort of on the opposite side of that, and then the wings. There's the one wing that's closer up above, and then the the bottom part is the other. It wing also looks like a sideways up. Christmas tree. Does and it really? <laughs> what else do I see? Yeah, exactly. It's like looking at the clouds. It's yeah, it really is. It's, I see. I see a, just a fluffy sheep. I see angry Republicans in the House of Representatives. <laughs> wow. Kind of a, kind of a I, is your government still shut down? Yeah. yeah. It's anarchy down here now. Is, so we don't oh, is it now anarchy? All right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm back on autopilot now. Sorry, right, we've all figured out we don't need them. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> this kind uh, of so, neat structure here, too. Oh, hold on. I'm going to go back to, to Gary's view here. Yeah, oh, there's like a cool. little twist and like a, like a dark 
globule yeah, coming yeah, down there. Right yeah. above the pillars. Yeah. That's very cool. That's huh. really neat. So, David, I love, you've got a really nice view of this crater now. Check that out. Yeah, we've got some high clouds, some cirrus moving in front of us. But, yeah, that's, uh, you, you can see the central peak, and uh, the sun is just starting to rise right over. I like the contrast where you can see the crater wall there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go to Corey's view here. And, uh, Corey, what do we got here? Well, this is the Bubble Nebula and M52, um, I believe, in Cassiopeia. That's great that you can get them both in the same view. That's actually, yeah, that's not the full. I can get um, a bigger field of view than that, but I zoomed in so you can see the bubble. Better. Yeah, so you can see the bubble. I don't know if you can hold your mouse over it. You can see the bubble just down in the bottom right there. It's, uh, right. But yeah. the, that sort of background blue color, that really is the moon washing things out, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Stupid moon. Yeah. Stupid, stupid moon! Reflecting the sun's photons and messing well, your you look, astrophotography. Uh, in, in this, there's another nebulous region up here. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. but yeah. um, No, you can't, actually. But anyway, right, so, so I Helen, can. Helen Reed would like to see a washed-out view of NGC 7009. I was going to look at that, and that is right next to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so we, well, the Saturn Nebula, yeah. Well, let's give it's it a, an Aquarius, let's give it a, yeah. Let's give it yeah. a try and, and really see a fully washed out. Yep. But, okay, so you get that other that other nebula in the upper right there of that image. Yeah, here I'll, I'll move over, yeah, right there. See, what I'll do is I'll just get a flashlight and aim it at the webcam. I'm like, look, it's right here. It's in, it's in the same constellation as the moon is right now in Aquarius. So. Yeah, I can go grab that. Or try. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank Assuming you. Assuming it's not behind the moon. I don't know if the moon occults that one or not. It might. That's great. I'll, I'll show you. Close it is to the ecliptic. It's a it's a neat object. I, I'll show a sort of yeah. one that somebody took with a little more time than than these circumstances. These jokers over yeah. here. Yeah. So that's what the Saturn Nebula looks like. It's just yeah. amazing, though. Look at this. Oh, awesome. Yeah, the structure inside, and those those lobes coming out on both sides. The, the lobes of ears. Yeah. Because, come on, it's Saturn. It's totally yeah. Saturn. I mean, it is absolutely Saturn. That's great. It's probably going to be too small for my field of view, but I'm going to try anyway. Yeah, you've got a just a mighty field of view. Have you ever tried imaging it, Gary? I can't see much of anything. It looks like a star. Yeah, again, your your field of view is... Yeah. Is the same or even well? No, you're 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 not quite as wide as Corey's view, actually, are you? Not quite. I'll seven oh nine. I'll take a look. It's yeah. Been a while since I've looked at it. We should we should. Uh, Helen Helen asked, and we must respond. Okay. Yeah. 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 Helen's Helen's awesome. Hell yeah. yeah. So she's been with us for a long time. We yeah. Yeah. So whatever she asked for, we're happy to oblige. We uh, we must obey. We must obey. <laughs> you want you want a a moon washed out to Saturn nebula? That's what you get. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, oh. Jamie Orlando says, yay, I asked for 7009 for the last three parties, and then I just gave up and got an image of it myself, which is, <laughs> which is awesome. Can you share it, Jamie? Yeah, that would be great. Come on, Jamie. Yeah, Put share it, in the, uh, in the chat, and then, or sorry, in the, uh, on the event page, and then I'll, uh, I'll share it into the, into the Hangout so people can see. Uh, oh, there's the one. Okay, he already did, I think, unless he was sharing the blue snowball. Let me see if I can show this off. No, it is. He did. He already, he's way ahead of me. Whoa. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me just grab his. Image. Oh, and Jamie, I did get your tweet. Just I'm without a phone right now because yay, my phone broke. So thank you for tweeting me. And yes, there's a VSP tonight. See? <laughs> <laughs> and you're in it. <laughs> and you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. So this is Jamie Orlando's view of the Saturn uh, Nebula, which is great. Look at that blue, blue blob. Blueberry blobby. <laughs> but it totally looks like Saturn. That's pretty cool. You got some yeah. color in there. And you, you, you can see even, if you look really closely, you can almost see some kind of inner structure there mm -hmm. as well. So uh, so terrific well, terrific picture, that's, Jamie. That's, that's awesome. Why these, that's why these are called planetary nebulas, because they resemble, uh, visually through an eyepiece, they resemble the disk, the disk of planets. Yeah. yeah. It's like the ghost of Jupiter. There's another uh, planetary nebula that's called the ghost of Jupiter. Oh really? I wonder. Oh, yeah, I, I, well, I, and I, also, the the bluish color they they thought it was going to be like Neptune or Uranus because it's yeah. so blue and that's what. Yeah, ne Neptune and Uranus. Yeah, visually they look like tiny planetary nebula. Mm -hmm. so it's, now it's, it's just a something about their visual appearance. It's it's nothing to do with what they their actual what they actually are. Now, exactly. Michael Dahmer says, did anyone capture an image of the triple occultation of Jupiter? And David, you were all I, a Twitter about I, it. <laughs> 
I, up I have. It. it was very low to the horizon here. Uh, I got up at 1 o'clock in the morning yesterday, had my scope already set out and ready to go and the webcam ready to go. I had to wait about half an hour for it to clear the trees. It was so low here. Uh, so it was very turbulent. I do have one I can screen share here. It's not the most impressive, but I can... And it's labeled. <laughs> so let me pull it up. Otherwise, you'd be like, I don't see anything. But let me see if I can screen share without deleting the internet. Don't delete the internet. Did, uh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone. Did we ask people to send pictures into Universe Today? or? I've, I've been scouring our Flickr page. I haven't seen yeah. any yet. Okay. Uh, I've seen a few on Google Plus that have been shared yeah. out and around. But, Speaking uh, of our Flickr page, that is a tremendous resource. I didn't realize just how many. Can you zoom in? Can you try zooming in on this? Yeah, I, could, I, I didn't realize how many images have been posted. We just crossed the 10,000 mark. Jesus. Yeah, That's so awesome. there's 10,000 images in our Flickr, Universe Today Flickr page. And so we often sort of look through that, and then if there's any pictures that that we think are especially neat and uh, newsworthy, we'll post about it on, on Universe Today. So right. so by all means, as another place, another yeah. place to, to communicate on the social medias. Because <laughs> we need another. Because we need more. We really need more. Yeah. 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 That, that right there is about 200 frames stacked, and I had to push the contrast like way overboard in order to see the shadows. Can you the, go bigger? Here. I can go a little bigger. It's, it's of course, it's going to increase all the cruddiness of the. Yeah, that's fine. that's fine. Show me your pixels, David. <laughs> yeah. No, you can go bigger just in the in the screen sharing program there in the in the image viewer. There's a little zoom in the bottom left. <laughs> there's this oh, there's okay. this new technology called zoom. It's called on zoom, enhance and magnify. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Calis- I see. Cal- Cal- I see the Calisto moon is there. actually out of the. Yeah. There's two off to the side. Uh, the shadows, uh, I had to kind of look at Starry Night to make sure that I wasn't just seeing artifacts in the image, but those actually, uh, and they showed that that one notch at the top is the very edge of Callisto's shadow, and I wouldn't oh, nice. have thought I wouldn't have thought that was actually anything but an artifact, but I saw it on several images, so I think it is real. Uh, Callisto, the moon Callisto is way off to the side of the frame, so you can't see the moon itself, but... Uh, I saw a better uh, shadow transit in 2004. This happens uh, every couple of years. We get uh, a season where uh, Callisto can actually transit, so we can get a triple transit. You can never get a quadruple, by the way. It's uh, it's because of the uh, orbital resonances of the inner moons. Yeah. You, you can get only a three by max, and Callisto has to be one of the three. Oh man. Okay, I found the image. I found your image. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me find the, a bigger version of this. Oh, can I do this? Okay. Let me just quickly screen share this. Over in Europe, they got some good... Because in Europe, it was high in the sky, so they had they had a good viewing in, uh, angle on it. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if... Oh, Samantha, nice. I Guess, wouldn't be su- see, who, see who took it, though? It's oh, Amit. Matt, nice. Yeah, oh, Amit, Amit, Amit got yeah. it, which is awesome. Oh, so, he- so oh, we got the animation. Rock yeah, on. with the animation. Look at that. So yeah. Amit is uh, was one of the people who first joined us on the virtual star party mm-hmm. back in now, the in the day. And uh, now, now here's something I notice visually too. Note that the size of the shadows are not the same. Uh, Callisto shadow. I can tell that's Callisto at the very bottom because it's got a much bigger shadow because it's more distant from Jupiter. Right. Those inner those inner shadows of uh, Io and Europa are much. And visually, when you look through the eyepiece, you can see that too. That. Uh, the shadows vary in size. I can I can tell which moon is transiting by which uh, by the size of the shadow when I see it. So there you go. So if you do plan to do a roundup of people's photographs, I don't know whether that's, Bob wants to, but if you do, uh, definitely I, inc- include Ahmed's picture because it's terrific. I have, that's the first animation I've seen. I yeah. haven't seen anyone do an animation. Yet. Yeah, it'd be great to get to get Ahmed back. And as as we enter winter time, then he'll be able to join us again. So that'll be great because he's in Turkey. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. cool! Yeah, yeah, so he's got a to- yeah. totally different longitude view than yeah. He's oh, cool. he's fantastic. Cool. And he's able to just pull out some some yeah. monster stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Frazier, I've got a washed out uh, NGC seven zero nine up right now. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I love it. It's completely <laughs> washed out. <laughs> hey, Corey, I think you, your white balance is a little out of whack there. Can is you it? Is that? it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little overexposed. Maybe, maybe a little. A little bit. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that one. Um, need, gonna need the narrow band like Gary's got. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Gary, what is this, Gary? Uh, this is the Triffid. Yes. And this oh, is nice. a two-minute. Uh, no binning, so I can zoom in and look at the uh, nice little structure and everything yeah. going on. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, look at that. This is one that really needs color, though. Yeah, let me try to pull up a color image of this real quick. Yeah, nice I really like that, but I like when you do the no binning because you get a lot more just detail. You don't get as much, I guess, faint uh, right. objects, but you really get that detail, and it's such a nice bright object like this. When they're bright enough, I can do it, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. There you go. Oh wow! Love the structures inside there. All right, I'm going to share some more pictures here. Um, what do we got? We got Kevin Franklin just shared a picture of the sun. With oh, this is great. All right. Um, bring that in. Is that the one? And there we go. There is my moon washed out NGC 7009. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Just, give me, just give me one <laughs> second, then I'll. I'll bring oh, that's in. awesome. Okay. Oh, look at that! Uh, at that picture of the sun with the yeah, the, the sunspots there. The, the yeah. sun is finally starting to be active again. I mean, this this solar minimum has been or maximum has been very profoundly quiet yeah. right now. Maximum. So, <laughs> so we're we're uh, it's it's the quietest maximum we've had for a century. So there's a lot of discussion about why that is, but the hopefully we're it's they, just a little they, shy. They think we might <laughs> yeah. be hitting we might be heading toward a second peak. In the solar maximum here, so it seems the activity is picking up again. All right, so no, this the is the radio activity this is, picked up a lot. This yeah. is truly a uh, a washed out. So is that it in the middle there? That sort of I, I larger think looking this star is it right here. That's the nebula, and right now the moon is about two field of views off my <laughs> camera. <so. laughs> right, right. I wonder and, what and, direction it's in. <laughs> uh, I, it, that's, I was trying to figure that out. It looks like one of those old Soviet views of uh, from like the far side of the moon or something like that. You're like, yeah, is that a pixel or what is that? <laughs> this isn't uh, the best time to try to be taking a picture of this. But you can see it's still small, and that's not been. That's just a 10 second exposure. If I tried to do any more, the whole thing would be white. So there yeah. you go, Helen. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's you. You got the washed out view, no question. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I'm going to mute for a moment while I clean the dew off my scope. Okay. Oh man. Okay. So Russell gave us some of his images here. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this one as well. Um, oh yeah, I love his composite. Yeah, this is great. Look at this. All right. I don't know if you can. This is coming through. Okay. Yeah. In big end. I don't. Yeah. Uh, Again. There, look at that. Yeah, just terrific. Yeah, it's a great job, Russell. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go back to Corey's view here in a second. Once I get myself organized, there we go. Corey, what is this? Uh, How this many is clusters a, is this? This is a moon washed out view of the double cluster. <laughs> that still looks really good, though. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, it's not super washed out. No, I'm it's only a. Uh, 30 second exposure, so that way at least they can see the you know the color and the stars. Um, right. Yeah, I'm really seeing the oranges pop out. Yeah. 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 That's what I always really like about having the color view on the clusters is you just get that texture of the stars, the different colors. The yeah, texture. Is, uh, They're bumpy I, and hot. They're hot, bump, <laughs> hot stars. Yeah, I uh, did a, a long exposure version of this um, recently that. Um, I mean, there's a ton of stars around it in general, but oh, the double cluster, cool. Yeah. Um, oh, the ISS. So Tyrian 2006 says on YouTube that the uh, ISS is approaching the west coast of North America between Vancouver and Seattle. So, so I would be able to see it. Run outside. I'll, I'll um, quick. I'll go. I'll go see it right now. Good idea. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of fun, fun like there. finding those apps to find when the ISS is passing over and actually watching it. Totally. And, like if you can get some binoculars. What when I was visiting Nicole and in, in St. Louis back in April, we we just all happened to time it perfectly, and I grabbed my binoculars, and we're able to actually see it going across. It's just fantastic. So if you ever get the chance, there's free apps on Android yeah. to find yeah. out where ISS yeah. is. Just go look up. You can just see it streak across the sky. It takes about what four minutes, four and a half minutes. Yeah. To yeah. A, yeah, I was really lucky. I was doing a big time lapse of trying to do during the Perseids, trying to get the the some meteors on camera. But instead, mm -hmm. the uh, the ISS went right through my field of view. Nice. I got a big time lapse of the ISS. Cool. It was pretty 
Yeah, it was pretty cool. When when it passes directly overhead, I was saying before on one of the shows earlier, it's a, I can see detail through binoculars. It looks like a little tiny Tie Fighter, like a Star Wars. Yeah, character. totally. Yeah. If it's yeah. if it's or if it's oriented the right way, if it's edge on, I don't see that. But it, sometimes it looks a little like a little boxy kind of shape. But with uh, my image stabilized binoculars, I can see I can actually see. And with this telescope, I have got detail before on it. I've managed. Well, to the. Detail. The big plan, the big, big plan is to try and bring in the ISS live into the Star Party, but it's going to take some some wrangling because... Uh, yeah. We need um, somebody with a... Uh, with could we need a really big net to catch it. <laughs> well, no, we need, somebody, we need somebody on the West Coast, right? We need somebody yeah. who lives on the West Coast because the way we do the virtual Star Parties, you only can really see the ISS shortly after sundown or just before sunrise. And so you, yeah. you know, if you notice all of the the... The tools that will tell you when it's going to come by, it's always just after you know after right. sunset. You you need an illuminated pass, yeah. When yeah, and so we need an illuminated pass, and so yeah. so we need somebody on the west coast who will be able to view it just when it's gone dark, and, and then and, and, tracking and then would, it and yeah, you you would need somebody either that's that's got a a joystick tracking system that's pretty accurate or tracking software that can that can just aim the scope and yeah, the way well, I do it is very low. I do it very low tech, but I don't think I could do it into a star party. <laughs> well, Scott Scott says he's able to keep it in view the whole time. This is Scott Ferguson, so yeah, um, no, not me. Not I mean, you. I look at it no. and like, hey, look, it's right yeah. there. Yeah, right over yeah. there. I wish you guys could see this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see if I can find some more images of the triple transit. The, the way I do it is I aim my scope manually as it passes over, and then I look back at the video afterwards, and then out of a few thousand frames, maybe I have one or two where it jumps through. Okay, here we go. So Tom Tarbotten is going to show us some pictures of the ISS. I'm just going to share them. Oh, right yeah. Now. There you Check go. this out. So that's a bunch of pictures of ISS, one after the other. It's a fuzzy TIE fighter. It's a fuzzy TIE fighter, yeah. But what I mean, where it's really good, and there's some really terrific uh, uh, photographers out there. Uh, probably the best guy is a guy named Thierry Legault, who lives in Paris, yeah. and he's built this amazing custom uh, sort of mount, and he's got this software written by from a guy in Germany, and he does these just amazing views of the. You know, he'll move, he'll go anywhere on the planet to try and get things to he, line up. He so managed get, to get uh, the ISS transiting during a partial eclipse. I think he had to go to yeah. Oman or UAE or somewhere to yeah, do Yeah, and I think he got, to, at one point he got an, a view of the, uh, what was it? He got the the ISS transiting in front of the sun while the Venus transit was happening. Right, so, yeah. yeah. Seeing yeah. that one was fantastic. And, uh, yeah. pro probably the, the hardest one I think he had to do is when he got the shuttle undocking from the ISS. And you would have to time that perfectly because they, they, they spread apart pretty quickly once they're undocked. Yeah. Uh, so, Gary, what's this? This is um, our oh, Borg Homer. Right. This is right. Borg Homer. The <laughs> Borg Homer Nebula. M8 the Lagoon. It looks really good. It doesn't look washed at all. Is it on pretty far away from the moon? Yeah, it's quite a ways away. Um, and just for the note, the 16, 17, M8, all of these, uh, we're going to be start losing them in a few weeks yeah. as they go off over the horizon. Yeah, we lose the nebula. But then we get the planets back. Well, so we get the planets, good. and then we get the winter yeah, we'll stuff, start, the Orion. We'll start, and, we'll start getting Jupiter back when we, uh, when we fall back next no in November. Early okay, November. Great. We should be able to. Daylight saving time. When we finally uh, leave daylight saving time. So, David or Corey, uh, Helen says, "Can you get uh, uh, Mare Nubium on the moon, which has a linear fault, the straight wall?" Yeah. And oh, the Rupees Recta. I think I can. Uh, and Terry, uh, oh, Terry Rhodes wants to know what equipment is Corey using. So, Corey, what's your setup? Uh, I'm using an 80 millimeter APO uh, refractor telescope. It's a Vixen ED80. Um, on it is and, a Vixen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Celestron, uh, <laughs> Celestron tracking mount. So it's actually not a big scope at all. What would one of those run? You know, you picked up. Get uh, there's an Orion version with the same glass that I would recommend if you want something. I mean, it. I don't want to say low end, but because I can, I can do quite a lot of good stuff with it. But um, it's only five hundred dollars just for the glass, and then you spend another maybe five hundred on a mount. Um, like what I've got, a CG5, and 
you're good to go. Then a camera, and then all the other stuff. So it's a it's a freaking roller coaster, but um, yeah. But it's a great setup. I mean, the mount is really good and stable, and the the field of view is really wide, and the and the pictures that you take with that telescope are just are, are just wonderful. So I think it's a great, you know, if you look to like Stuart's setup, he's got sort of the big brother version of what you've got. He's got more like the one thirty millimeter refractor with, with right. really nice glass. So it's it's more of I know his is more like about a five thousand dollar telescope. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the whole thing, folks. When we recommend things, we are crack dealers. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is just the first taste, and it's free. When you start doing it yourself, you're going to be paying a lot of money. I saw somebody requested M33, so I got a washed out version of M33. Perfect. Um, I'm, starting, I'm starting to get overrun by clouds. That's why my, my view is so cruddy right now. I have the moon in there, but. It's uh, it's behind a, the clouds are getting thicker. Yeah, you could have had me fooled. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fuzzy. So it's in there. So that that t the straight wall is in there somewhere. I might be able to pull up a. I might have an archived image of it. I have imaged it before. I know what she's talking about. It's a it's a straight wall, that's uh, it's about a hundred kilometers long by about a hundred kilometer, and it, it is favorably illuminated right now. I was looking at it earlier tonight. Let's see if I got an archived image. I might. I'm going to go back to Gary's view. Now, we call this the, the Borg Homer, but but what is it yeah. really again? It's the uh, Lagoon M8. It, right. Yeah. yeah. But it does look like Borg Homer. <laughs> <laughs> well, until I do this with it, and then it looks like just the way I took it. Let me get it back. There we go. Now, let's see. What does it look like? Besides the upside-down Borg bar, bar. Homer. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, I got nothing. Yep, no, it's some uh, kind of bug creature, maybe. Uh, it's, it's more good like bug this. creature nebula. There we yeah. Go. yeah. So again, that really, really bright spot. So this is a star-forming region in space, um, and that really bright, washed-out spot is where there's a whole pile of uh, of really hot uh, Type O stars that are pumping out enormous amounts of radiation, a lot of it in the ultraviolet, and uh, and then it's lighting up. All that radiation is lighting up the whole the whole region. And within the next few million years, those things will start to go in kaboom, kaboom, and uh, seeding the rest of the nebula with heavier and heavier elements, which right. will eventually um, sort of compress down and form uh, smaller mass stars like our own sun and, uh, and the planets. And thanks for the death of those stars, they'll get their heavy elements. New Yay for nuclear synthesis! <laughs> oh, David, what's this? Uh, what's is that, this a picture you took of the ISS? That is the ISS through this telescope. That's like, like I said, out of thousands and thousands of frames, that was one of the better frames I got. Nice. Right there. That you can, That's you amazing. Can see, you can see the structure. It was from a few years ago. Yeah. So. Uh, William Good asked, did anyone looking at Andromeda? You had it earlier, Corey, right? I don't know if you saw the picture kicking around. I did. Um, I can pull it back up. I I got it on my list here too in a minute. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Um, just for a little bit of not to do with anything, but I actually talked to the space station once. Oh, oh wow. really? Yeah. yeah, they do broadcast on, uh, it's an FM band. They have, a, uh, yeah, on two meters, they have a ham station up there. Yeah, uh, I know ham radio operators do track it, yeah. Yeah, I actually okay. talked to them once. Oh, very cool. Did they talk back? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, that's amazing. What'd they say? Come on. Hello. Spill it. But once they come over the coast, the problem is their footprint, they're seeing, you know, hundreds of people trying to talk to them. Right. Yeah. So as he came over the horizon, I'm on the on the west, and uh, in fact, we had big fires out here then. And mm. he came over, I heard him comment on the plume, and I told him I was at the bottom, at the bottom of the plume. So we talked about that, and then he got swamped. Nice. That's <laughs> yeah, awesome. Imagine. Here we go. Here's Here's the Andromeda that Corey took earlier. Nice and blue and washed out. Yeah, yeah. No, that was that's not super washed out. Uh, I'm gonna go to David's view here. Oh, there's the yeah, straight there's, wall. Yeah, there's a, that's an archived image. But it, so, it's a, so David, you can change the sh the size of this window so that it is closer to the shape of the of the picture, and that will actually make it bigger. Yeah. No, uh, no, like of your actual, uh, hang on. like Microsoft window window. Yeah. If you make it better conform to the shape, then it'll it'll make it look a little better. That's but uh, yeah, that's a that's a really cool feature. So what what causes a feature like that, David? Do you know? That's that's 
just that's just a, a, a slip right there where the, people. It's, it, it's it's actually about a I believe a hundred kilometers long, uh, and a few hundred meters high. It's uh when it reaches favorable illumination, it's, it's just a slip underneath the the material there, where it's uh, it's, like it's, it's like a little more collapsed down. Yeah, yeah, one side of it's collapsed down. It's so if right, you were standing reaches, like right on the moon, like against this thing, would you be seeing like a big sheer cliff? It would be pretty high, yeah, because a, a few hundred meters is fairly high, about 300 yeah. feet. So, yeah, it would be it'd be a reasonably high fault right there that you'd be looking down. It would probably be like a gradual rise on one side. And, but then um, a, a sheer cliff on the other side. Yeah, right, right there it's actually at a better illumination than it is tonight. Tonight I could see it just barely. Last night I could see it a little sharper. It looks kind of right. like a solid in a way. Right, and the illumination really matters. If you get the yeah. illumination at the right tomorrow, angle, then it then that feature is really... It, it vanishes when the sun is almost overhead. When the moon is full, you can't even see it. Mm -hmm. Right. You can only see it right what, for about a day or two when it's along the Terminator. Right. Uh, we just passed first quarter Friday, so right within a day or two of first quarter. Another feature I was photographing Friday night was the Lunar X. I think we brought in before. Yeah, too. the Lunar yeah. X is awesome. Yeah, yeah, we've done that. Uh, I'm gonna go back over to Corey's view first. His purple moon. Purple moon. That's right. I'd make it pink, but um, you're able to make it red. I can make it red, but I don't. I don't want you to to mess with anything, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> make it red, Corey. Just just do it. So what's no, that big no. crater that we can see, sort of on the near the Terminator, up towards the top of the moon there? Uh, yes. well, a, a long time ago, um, a large rock hit the moon. <laughs> I, think, I think that's like, <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I think that's I'm, a previous crater right there. Okay. Is it? Where is the yeah. straight wall? Is, can is there possible? Can I get straight it? Straight wall is it's it's further it's further down. Is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, I have it actually here, but it's like the clouds are still kind of messing with me. Okay. Yeah, that's Clavius and Tycho. Yeah. Tico the one, Tico. the one with the Tycho, Tycho. <laughs> yeah. The, Let's see if I can get it. I, I have the lunar straight wall in the center there, but it's very difficult with the clouds to really see it well. It's between those two small craters. There's like, but but in this image, it just looks like maybe a little shadowy line. Oh yeah, okay. Take my word for it; it's there. <laughs> I believe you, David. Whatever you say. See if I can no. mess with the if I can mess with the brightness a little bit on the camera, it might pop out. But... I need a cloud zapper. <laughs> and then that's Copernicus right there, that that one right in the middle. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes, it's at a pretty good illumination. I don't know if people can see. Thanks to phases of the moon. Well, where would you get something awesome like that? I know, right? Phases there it is. The phases of the moon. There's Copernicus, and that's Mare, Mare Imbrium. You can pick it up for free yeah. on the Google Play Store. Actually, yeah, actually we're, I, we're did now, a, I did an ad for you in our paper for that's awesome. International Observe the Moon Night yesterday. In fact, our paid version is the eighth most popular uh, weather app now. Nice. Yeah. Um, I've gone to Gary's view, and I see some kind of dumbbell. Uh, that's it. M27. Hey, don't judge. Uh, Clonara wanted to know if that was a live picture. That is a live picture of the moon, a live video of the moon. Yeah, the one from Corey. And the, the one that David's doing as well, so I'll move back to that in a second. But that's a great dumbbell nebula. That is. Called the Great Gun And you can really see those those other, those fainter lobes, the, the top yeah, and bottom right one. Right in there. here. Yeah. Which is pretty surprising with the stupid, stupid moon. moon. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's quite a ways away from it. So yeah. you can see them a little bit better in there. It's also called the, the Apple Core Nebula, so if you rotate it a little bit, then it would look like an Apple Core. But it's a planetary nebula, just like we were looking at earlier, where we have uh, an old star going through its death throes, and it's sloughing off its matter. All right, I'm going to go back to purple, purple Copernicus. Purple Copernicus. <laughs> <laughs> purple Copernicus. Yeah, you, you can see the edge of the lunar Purple Copernicus. You, you can see the rays coming off it right now. Copernicus is a fairly 
recent crater, recent being a few hundred million years old. So. And you can see as well that, that central peak in the crater, yes. right? And this is this situation where, and you can see this if you like drop rocks into water and you watch like slow motion rocks in water and rocks in mud and things like that, that you get this this central, like when it drops and hits into the water, then you get this peak that comes back out of the water. Mm -hmm. And then, but imagine instead of it being water, it's rubble, <laughs> right? And then it just kind of comes back down and rains and piles up in this central peak after the crater hits. In that, you can see the edge of the lunar Apennines, those mountains that are running right off to the side on my left of the screen. And they there. ring around Mare Imbrium, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not too far from the the Apollo 15 landing site is right off to the edge of the side of those there. Probably right in the very lower left of the frame. Yeah. I can pull that up. Lower left. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. You, you got it right about centered there is uh, the rough yeah. area of the, the yeah. Apollo 15 landing site. And then that's Mare Senitatis to the left of it there yeah. in, that, in that view. The problem is that it's all upside down, Corey. You know you're imaging it upside down, right? Oh, yeah, sorry about that. But I'll turn the camera, but, you know, I'll be back in half an hour. You, you, can see, you can yeah. see the contrast of a lot of older craters there at the bottom where they're all filled in. They, they can actually date a lot of the areas by the, the, the statistical number of impacts and how old they are, and how fresh the craters are. Super fresh. <laughs> David, is that over on the right now uh, the right bottom, and that's just a crater um, showing, like reflecting, right? It's yeah, the, it's, it's at a different, it's at a different illumination angle. The sun's at a higher angle there, so they, but the, okay. there are some, there are some craters that that do have a, a much higher albedo. The moon okay. actually, the moon, it, it looks really bright white, but it's actually a very dark object. It's actually got the albedo of like 10 percent or so, like really? uh, fre like fresh asphalt, mm -hmm. or not, or, or worn asphalt, I would say. It's uh, the moon close up is actually very dull gray in color. The astronauts when they were on it, it's actually it's it's not as ivory white as it looks in the sky. It's just so heavily illuminated that right, it's just exactly. really bright. You've got, all, you've got what little sunlight that ten percent of sunlight you have is being uh, concentrated down to a very small point in the sky. While Enceladus right has a albedo of like ninety. Yeah, it's like well, snow. Yeah, it's, it's like, like white fresh, snow. Fresh snow has an albedo of about ninety percent. A cloud cover on the Earth has like uh, an albedo about 80, 90 percent. Yeah, so you can just imagine if we had Enceladus as a moon, yeah, it'd be much brighter. Yeah. And by yeah. albedo, we mean reflectivity of light. Yeah. So yeah. How how much yeah. light it's reflecting back. That looks just great, Corey. Thank you. Yeah. Now, are you? How are you getting the live view differently from the the? The pictures you were taking. Um, it's in the same program, um, Backyard EOS. It has a planetary mode on it that, um, if your DSLR can do live view at all, it will use that and just uh, capture it. So that's very cool. My moon is almost totally clouded out. It looks like a, a like a, a white blob behind the clouds right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I switched over to the web uh, to the HD cam. You, you're just vain. We just want to slow you. I understand you. I just want to play with my new camera. <laughs> um, do, do you get the C920? Uh, this, this is a Microsoft uh, live cam. Oh, the live cam. Yeah, I got the studio. That one's really nice. Yeah. So I'm going to show off another picture here of ISS. Is it ISS that Marcos put in? Yeah, well, this yeah. comes it, it's from Rodrigo Rios. Mm -hmm. And look wow. at that. Wow, that is amazing. Isn't that just unbelievable? Oh, I can't. I have to zoom the you, real one. You, you, you know, during the Cold War, they couldn't do images that, that uh, with that much detail, like uh, government image uh, observatories that were tracking spy satellites couldn't get that kind of detail. And now amateurs can get that kind of detail. That's right. <laughs> it's just in the in the power of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there, That's great. The the technology arms race between amateur and professional. I'm going to move to Gary's view. This is my Andromeda M31. And uh, what's great about Gary's view is you can really see those those star 
clusters we were talking about earlier, those yeah. knots of star formation that are in the spiral arms of the galaxy. You got some satellite galaxies in there, too. Let's see at least yeah. two or three. Satellite galaxy here and here, yeah. and some star forming in this area and down in here. Awesome. Yeah. We're going to lose Andromeda in the next, uh, I guess, what, next month or so? Uh, I don't no. think so. No? We'll have it for a little while? It's still oh, yeah. a while. It's, um, it's not quite even at zenith yet for me. So. Oh, okay. All right. It's still rising. Uh, so Clonaro wants to know, with our telescopes, are we able to observe other planets? Uh, yes, in fact, we have viewed every planet except for Mercury live in the right. Virtual Star Party, and we have also imaged Pluto. And a couple which of... Which uh, awesome. Yeah, which was amazing. And we've also... I mean, had, it's all done. Yeah, but it's just the fact that you know what it is that we're looking at is, right. the, is the key. So, and we've also had, uh, lo you know, a bunch of asteroids, lots of comets. We've had some live comets. Mm -hmm. and we, uh, we had eclipses and the Venus <laughs> transit. Yeah. Star trails. We would probably have to nab Mercury at a favorable evening apparition, uh, which usually you get one or two a year. Right now, the, it's at greatest elongation right now, but it's not favorable for North America. So, mm. yeah. We could probably make that happen the next year or so. I, um, I think it's a goal we can go for. It won't look X-Men like 049 asks, do, does anyone have pictures of the Hubble Space Telescope? Now, Hubble's at a higher altitude, right? It's like 500 yes, kilometers, I think? Yeah, yeah. 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 Hubble, Hubble was right at the edge of the shuttle servicing uh, capability when they when they went up to it. it it's in a 28-degree in a incl inclination orbit, and yeah, it's like 500 kilometers. 500? Miles, kilometers, I think it is. So anyone who wants to watch gravity, I just want to let <laughs> you all know. Yeah, I was going to uh, say. The, the International <laughs> Space Station orbits a couple of hundred kilometers lower than yeah. the Hubble Space Telescope on it a is. completely different orbit. It's, it's in a 52-degree inclination orbit, so they can reach it from Baikonur. So they can reach it from Baikonur as well as uh, Cape Canaveral. So. But all you have to do is float out there, right? I mean, I haven't seen it, but I've heard that lots of angry like orbits aren't there because, well, yeah. unless that's you all, would... Yeah, that's all I'm saying is well, just that. And just a reminder, too, with the Hubble, we are doing a Hangout tomorrow and on Tuesday. Oh, that's Hubble awesome. Give, give us some more information about that, Scott. What's going on? So we are working on the Orion Nebula and the star-forming regions of it. So there are a... Um, <clears throat> there's a workshop at the Space Telescope Science Institute, and so we will be doing a live broadcast from there and bringing in some some astronomers and astrophysicists and things like that to be able to talk with us. And then also I pose it up to a lot of our astronomers here from the Virtual Star Party to bring in their images of the Orion Nebula. Oh, that's so great. we'll be branching it through on... It's going to be 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific. For both Monday and Tuesday. Okay, great. But you've got an event for that, and people yep. can go look. Event page. I'll put that into our own event page for this. Okay, year. that sounds great. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, cool. Okay, well, we should probably start wrapping this up then. Gary's got one last view of something, the North American Nebula. No. That's it. Yep. Nice. Nice. With the um, Gulf of Mexico right here, and a little nub of Florida and Mexico going on that way. <laughs> so we're kind of kind of looking at the heartland of America right here. And let's see, Fraser, you're probably up over in this corner around here. Get out of the there. corner, Fraser. Yeah. No, I'm further up in the. I'm off the view. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be off the view. Never mind. Yeah. You're not in the picture. I'm sorry. You're yeah. just barely in the picture <laughs> where the G is on the Google Plus. I think you're just. You're just barely in the image as well. But. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this up. So, Corey, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. No problem. And uh, and hopefully at some point you're going to get access to maybe some bigger telescopes and uh, that's yeah that's the hope um, if I if that works out I will definitely bring them that will be great oh very cool yeah all right and David thanks as always yeah, that's great I love the view here we got your telescope I kind of like this yeah it's a little cooler now I yeah. just got to remember the webcam's over here and not over here now <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly all right and thank you very much Gary very welcome as always. And uh, Scott, glad you were able to make it at the last minute. At the last minute, just jumping on in like a ninja. 
<laughs> and if you haven't already, I just want to remind you that you ought to subscribe to this channel wherever you're seeing it on YouTube, and that way you'll get uh, reminders about the various cool things that we're doing. Uh, we've got Astronomy Cast coming tomorrow at noon. We've got uh, the Weekly Space Hangout on Friday at <laughs> noon. I've got a bunch of bunch two more space explainers coming out next week, so uh, lots nice. of good stuff coming out from the channel. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be a busy week for space. Even yeah, though the government's was... shut down, the universe has hasn't shut down. And, uh, it has not, and we're still doing a lot. Let's see, we have Hubble on Monday and Tuesday. We have a Comet Ison update on the 17th because Hubble just got some more data oh, on, nice. oh, cool. on I heard Ison. Oh, nice. these images, yeah. I heard that. So we're getting some of that in coming up. And, yeah, there's all sorts of things. So even though the government shut down, we're still doing everything science because it's awesome. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, we'll see, thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you guys all uh, next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Later.